damn phones. Babylon can't crack the coat. The NFL draft has been over for about a week now, and hundreds of players have been drafted and or signed as undrafted free agents to NFL teams, and they'll start their journey as pro football players trying to accomplish their dreams of playing in the National Football League. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about five NFL draft picks that I really liked and tell you why you do not need to be sleeping on these players going into 2023. Before I move on, remember to smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Now let's get into it. The first player that I'm going to be talking about in today's video is Kansas State running back Deuce Vaughn. Deuce Vaughn was selected in the 6th round with the 35th overall selection in that round by the Dallas Cowboys. Deuce Vaughn is a player that I really admire and one that I was really high on going into this year's draft as I've been a big fan of his since he really broke out for K-State as a true freshman in the 2020 college football campaign. Over the span of his three-year career as a Wildcat, he rushed for 3,604 yards, averaged 5.5 yards per carry, and accounted for a total of 34 touchdowns on the ground, had 1,280 receiving yards, and a total of 9 receiving touchdowns over the three-year span of his career. Not to mention, he is also a two-time All-American in his time at Kansas State. Now, Deuce Vaughn wasn't expected to go early in the 2023 NFL Draft, and he surely didn't. He was expected to be a day three pick, just like he was. From rounds five to seven, he was expected to be drafted, but ultimately would be taken in the sixth round. Now, why is Deuce Vaughn such an underrated prospect to me? To me, I thought he was honestly one of the best running backs in the nation in his college football career at K-State, especially during the 21 campaign and the 2022 college football season, respectfully. Deuce Vaughn, he's not the biggest running back. In fact, he's the smallest running back in this entire NFL draft class and is likely going to be the shortest NFL back in the league for quite some time. As he stands in at 5'5", 179 pounds, yes, he is small, but it's not the first time that we're going to see small running backs in the NFL. He's someone who had a lot of success on the collegiate level with his speed, elusiveness, and overall being extremely hard to be taken down because of his height, but he also is a force to be reckoned with with the ball as well. He can truck you, he can maneuver you, he is someone I'm very high on, and if he was taller, I guarantee you he would have been one of the first running backs taken in this entire draft. I think with the Dallas Cowboys in 2023, he's obviously not going to be the starter over Tony Pollard, as that's likely going to be his big time role, but I believe Deuce Vaughn's going to carve himself out a pretty good role as a Cowboy. Moving on to the next player, I'm going to be talking about Georgia tight end Darnell Washington. Washington was expected to be a first round, maybe second round pick in this year's draft, but ultimately he would fall all the way to the late third round to the Pittsburgh Steelers, and he was taken with the 30th overall selection in that third round. Darnell Washington was one of the tight ends in this draft that I was very high on. And rightfully so. He had a good career at Georgia where he showed a lot of potential. Obviously, he wasn't their go-to tight end with Brock Bowers being that guy. In my opinion, the best tight end in college football. And one that I believe could potentially be a top 10 pick in the 2024 NFL Draft. But in his career as a Bulldog, Darnell Washington had 774 receiving yards on 45 receptions, averaging 17 yards a reception and three tight ends while being a good blocker. He's coming off his best season of his college career and his most healthy one at that. As in 15 games played, he had 454 receiving yards and two receiving touchdowns. Now, do I necessarily think the Steelers were the best place that Darnell Washington could have gone to thrive in the NFL the best he could day one. Not necessarily, but I also do really like the fit. He more than likely is not going to be their tight end one, similar to like he was in college. But I still think he's going to have a big role, being a big body tight end like himself at 6'7", 265 pounds. He can be a force while blocking and be very reliable in the pass game. And I think him and Pat Fryermuth as tight ends are going to be a very good one-two combo. Flipping it over to the defensive side of the ball, the next player I'm going to be taking a look at is Northwestern defensive lineman Adetomi Adebare. 
Now, Adetomi Adebore was taken in the fourth round, eighth overall selection for that round by the Indianapolis Colts. Now, in my opinion, this is one of my favorite draft picks in this entire 2023 class. In his college football career at Northwestern, he was a very big bright spot for that Northwestern defense from 2020 to the 2022 college football campaigns. As in his career, he racked up 97 total tackles, 24 and a half tackles for loss, 12 and a half sacks, one interception, and four forced fumbles. And in his last season in 2022, he had a career high of 38 total tackles, a career high of tackles for loss at nine total tackles for loss, and a career high of, in sacks of five sacks for the season. He's a prospect that I'm very high on, and he might just be one of the most athletic defensive linemen in this draft. He comes in at 6'2", 282 pounds. Yes, not the tallest defensive lineman. He can play inside and flip outside on the D-line as a 3-tech as well. But he's also someone who has insane speed at 449 official from his NFL combine, a 37 and a half vertical jump, and with some very good tape at Northwestern. He even had some hype to be a late first round, second round guy in this year's draft. But ultimately, he fell to the fourth round. And this is a pick that I believe is going to pay dividends for the Colts. People say the Colts had one of the best drafts out there. And this pick definitely shows, as this is a guy I believe has very high upside and has a lot of potential to be a great NFL player. Going back to the running back position for this next player, it's someone that probably wasn't talked about enough at the running back position for this 2023 draft class, and that's Dwayne McBride from UAB. Dwayne McBride would end up being selected in the seventh round, pick number five for that round by the Minnesota Vikings. He had a star-studded career at UAB, where he was the 2022 Conference USA Offensive Player of the Year, and in his career, he rushed for 3,523 yards, averaged 7 yards a carry, and had 36 total touchdowns on the ground. In his 2022 CUSA Offensive Player of the Year campaign, he rushed for 1,713 yards, averaging 7.4 yards a carry, and had a total of 19 touchdowns on the ground one of the truly most dominant running backs in the nation for the 2022 campaign. Now, I believe this is a very underrated running back pick for the Minnesota Vikings. I don't think Dwayne McBride's going to be someone that plays a lot as a rookie unless there's just injuries in that Minnesota back backfield. I believe he could be a third-string running back for the 23 season, but here's why I think it's underrated. He's someone that had a lot of production. And if you look at his production score and athleticism score for the NFL Combine, the NFL Next Gen Stats breakdown, he's a top 10 running back in this class. Not to mention, you look at the film, you look at the tape at UAB, he's very good. There's some things he needs to clean up on, like being more productive in the past game and, of course, limiting his fumbles that he had at UAB. But if you look at the Minnesota Vikings situation, Dalvin Cook could be traded during the season or, you know, be dealt off next season as it's really unclear if Dalvin Cook's going to be a Viking in 2024. And maybe this pick is preparing for that, developing Dwayne for a year and to get him ready to be a main back along with Madison in the 2024 NFL season. For the final player I'm going to be talking about in today's video, it is Tennessee wide receiver Jalen Hyatt. Jalen Hyatt was expected to be a first round pick, maybe even very early second round pick at that, as he was one of the top receivers in the previous college football season of 2022, winning the Bolitnikoff Award and being a consensus All-American after having a great campaign as a volunteer of 67 receptions for 1,267 yards, averaging nearly 19 yards of reception and 15 touchdowns through the air. Shockingly to me, Jalen Hyatt would not be a late first or even early second round pick. In fact, he would fall in this draft all the way to the third round to the New York Giants with the 10th overall selection in the third round. Now, I do really like this pick for the Giants as I think it's a really good value pick for a player like Jalen Hyatt. Of course, some people think Jalen Hyatt could be a boom or bust prospect as ultimately... He's in a very favorable offense at Tennessee, one where receivers can definitely thrive in, and he really did have one big season of production in college 
in 2022, the year where he was, in fact, most healthy, and the year where he really did blow up. But this is a third-round pick, and they got the Bolitnikov Award winner, and one that showed a lot of production in 2022 at Tennessee, and in fact is one of the more athletic receivers in this class, a true barn burner with 4-4 speed and a 40-inch vertical jump. And he had very good hands at Tennessee as well. If everything goes to plan like you think it would with Jalen Hyatt, a player of his caliber, you think he's going to be a pretty good NFL player for the New York Giants. But ultimately, that is still going to be determined, along with every player that I've mentioned in today's video. Well, guys, if you made it this far in today's video, drop something down in the comment section below. Who are your favorite draft picks in the 23 NFL Draft? And before you head out, remember to smash that like button, turn on those post notifications, and subscribe if you haven't already. Be Kelly out.